So, you have a split and unbreakable sequel for me. Yes, sir, I do. So it's gonna be called Glass. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Like the French word for ice? Well, I was thinking more like the character Mr. Glass. Right, that makes more sense. So in this one, we're gonna have David Dunn from Unbreakable trying to track down the beast from Split. Oh, uh, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, they're gonna have a little fight in a warehouse, but they're gonna crash through a window and the cops are gonna be waiting for them outside. How did they know where they were? Unclear. And if they knew both of their locations, why did they wait for them to be together to arrest them? Also unclear. Well, okay then. Anyway, they're gonna be brought to this high security mental facility where Mr. Glass is being held too. And by high security, you mean horrible security. Gotcha. And they're gonna be put in special rooms that prevent them from escaping. Oh, like locked rooms? Yeah, but they also have special stuff in them, like the one that the beast guy Kevin goes into as these special flashy hypno lights. Special flashy hypno lights? Yeah, every time he acts up or gets too close to a door, these things flash and he switches personality. And these lights are supposed to prevent him from escaping? Yeah, pretty cool, right? Why doesn't he just, you know, cover his eyes? Well, because then he'd be able to escape. Yeah. And I can't have him escape because this is where the movie takes place. Right, but he'd technically be able to just cover his eyes and that would solve his problem. Yeah, but he's not gonna. Because you don't want him to. Exactly. I'm the writer, so I decide what he does. That is true. And plus, this machine's gonna let us have a scene where a nurse guy gets scared and just flips the switch over and over and over again. Why would he do that instead of just leaving the room? So we get to watch James McAvoy do his thing. Fair enough. That is very entertaining. Yeah, people really really like that in Split, so most of this movie is just gonna be, you know, James McAvoy showing off. I thought the title of the movie was Glass, though. Wouldn't he be the main focus? Oh yeah, I mean, eventually he will get involved, but for most of the movie, he's just gonna do an impression of Hector Salamanca from Breaking Bad. Well, that was a great show. Yeah, and then when he's done with the impression, he's gonna turn into an exposition machine. Oh, he is? Yeah, because he has to explain nerdy comic book stuff to the audience. What do you mean? Like, let's say before the big showdown, he'll say, like, in the comics, this is where the big showdown would happen. Is that really necessary? Of course, how else are people gonna understand what happens in comic books? Comic book movies have dominated the box office for the past decade. I feel like people are pretty familiar. Well, we're gonna spell it out for them. Fair enough, spelling things out is T-I-G-H-T. What the hell is a Taigi hit? That's not what I was spelling. So anyway, who else is in the movie? Oh, well, there's this doctor, Ellie Staple. Oh, and what's her deal? Well, she's trying to convince them that they're not superheroes. Wait, what? Yeah, she's like, you didn't do anything superhuman, you're just really good at certain things. But we saw them do superhuman stuff. Or did did we? We did. Well... And so what happens next? Well, they start doubting their abilities a little bit, but Mr. Glass is like, yeah, no, we're superheroes. Okay. So he's gonna convince the Beast to team up with him, and they're gonna escape. How? Well, he's gonna kill one of the nurses with a piece of glass. That's the name of the movie. It is, I know. Well, and how do they get past security? They just kind of walk past them. Uh, this place has the worst security. Yeah, and the whole movie, we're gonna tease a big showdown at this brand new tower that's being unveiled. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Well, don't get too excited, because it's just a big misdirect. Oh. Yeah, the final fight is just gonna be like on the front lawn of the facility. Why would you do that though? It's a misdirect and it means I'm clever. Does it? Yup, automatically. So if I was like, hey, we're gonna go out to a nice restaurant and then suddenly I was like, actually the plan this whole time was to eat some cold leftover chili. That would be very clever of you. Oh, okay. I think I understand now. Anyway, so we're gonna find out that Kevin's dad was on the same train that David was on back in the day, the one that crashed. Oh, so Mr. Glass is responsible for his dad's death. Yup, and so the beast is gonna kill him. Oh. Yeah, and then one of Dr. Staples' men is gonna shoot Kevin and kill him. Oh my lord, but isn't he bulletproof as the beast? Yeah, but when that Casey girl from Split touches him, he turns back into Kevin. Why? The power of true love or something? I don't know. Get off my back. Well, okay then. And then they're also gonna take on David. Well, it's gonna be tough for them to take down the unbreakable man David Dunn. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, they're just gonna, you know, drown him in a puddle. What? Yep, they just hold him down in a puddle and he dies pretty quickly. Feels like we barely got to see him in this movie. That's right, after 19 years, we're barely gonna feature him and he's gonna drown in a mud puddle. People are gonna like that? Oh yeah, people are gonna love that because it's gonna subvert their expectations. Which is automatically clever. Now you're getting it. Wow. And we're also gonna reveal that Dr. Staple is part of a secret organization that's trying to keep superheroes under wraps. Oh. Yeah, so that's why she was trying to convince them that they're not superheroes. But if killing them was an option, why didn't they just, you know, do that in the first place? Because then the movie would have lasted 10 minutes. Feels like there's a whole lot of characters not doing logical things to prevent the movie from ending. Yeah, a whole lot. I'm the writer. That's right, you are. And so then Dr. Staple's gonna go meet with her secret organization. Wait, what about the facility staff that probably witnessed all this stuff? Eh, she just asks them to not say anything and she lets all the witnesses go free. Wow, this secret organization's pretty sloppy. Yeah, and so they go meet in this restaurant where it turns out everybody's a part of the organization. If everybody in the restaurant's from the organization, why not just meet in a private place? I don't know. Fair enough. And then we're gonna find out that Mr. Glass hacked the camera 
cameras at the facility and the footage of the fight gets released online. Okay. And so there's gonna be public footage of the Beast lifting a car and David bending a steel bar. And what's that supposed to do? It's supposed to change the world. I mean, there are clips of people actually doing those things for real on YouTube right now. And the world has never been the same since they were uploaded. It has. Oh well, so what do you think of the movie? Well, I have a lot of notes. You sure about that? I mean, yeah, it definitely feels like there are some questionable decisions in here. Well, screw you then. What? Hey guys, it's Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that pitch meeting. If you did, let me know in the comments section what other movies you'd like to see pitches for. We also have a lot more of these videos on the channel. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and share on Facebook and Twitter. Just start hitting all the buttons, except hopefully dislike. And as always, check back soon for a new pitch meeting. Bye-bye.